I, I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to present to you our convocation speaker. Sharon Prill, who is the publisher of the Yakima Herald Republic, is, I believe, one of the best role models in the state of Washington for young people planning to develop their careers. And as a matter of fact, it was only a few years ago that Sharon Prill was acknowledged as one of the 40 most successful people under 40, 40 under 40, uh, in the publishing world in, in the United States. Uh, she's a native of Hawaii, is very proud of her own Filipino heritage, but native of Hawaii, and graduate of the University of Washington. Our good colleagues and friends from Seattle, who actually have about three offices on our campus, too. Um, spent a number of years uh, as a uh, young person in the publishing world with the Seattle Times, and then went off and left the fair state of Washington to go to the Midwest, to go to Wisconsin, where she became the senior vice president at the Milwaukee Sentinel Journal. About three years ago, she was encouraged, seduced, recruited, whatever it is, to come back home to Washington. We're so happy she did come back home uh, because she's doing a wonderful job with our newspaper, the Yakima Herald Republic. And without any further ado, it's my honor to introduce to you Sharon Prill. Dr. Bassett, distinguished faculty, staff, students, and honored guests. I'm privileged and greatly honored to be your fall convocation speaker this morning. Now I must confess, when Dr. Bassett asked me to be your speaker, my initial reaction was to find the most convenient excuse as to why I could not do this and politely decline the invite. You see, unlike my very extroverted husband, whom some of you know, I don't particularly enjoy the thought of speaking to large crowds. Most of my life I've spent avoiding being heard because I spoke English as a second language. As a kid, I spent several years in social silence and several more thereafter trying to perfect my American accent, a la John Wayne, <laughs> only to figure out later in life that more important to what you say is what you do. As far as talking about myself, I never thought there was anything interesting about me or my life. What could I possibly have to say that would be relevant or remotely exciting to anyone outside of my immediate family? Nevertheless, I agreed to speak for two reasons. One, Dr. Bassett has a way of making it virtually impossible to say no. <laughs> and two, somewhere along the line, I made a commitment to never turn down an invitation to speak unless I had a really good reason. For someone with my heightened sense of introversion, this is a hard-fought promise to keep. But I knew fundamental to what I advise to those who seek my counsel, I need to set an example and practice what I preach. So as I sat down to the task of writing this speech, I thought about my own college years, my first job, and the long road from the Philippines to Honolulu, to Seattle, to Wisconsin, and ultimately to Yakima, Washington, and the Yakima Herald Republic. It was this rewind through the past that made me realize that I do have something to say, and that what we have in common, and what is of relevance to you and me, is a shared background and a strong desire to do something more with our lives than what we were given to start out with. Several years ago, there was a movie that came out, some of you may have seen, Sliding Doors, starring Gwyneth Paltrow. The movie itself was barely memorable, but it was the premise of the story that intrigued me. The film alternates between two parallel universes based on the two paths the central character's life could have taken depending on whether or not she catches a train. Ultimately, neither scenario in the movie seemed appealing in outcome. After all, in one, she gets hit by a car and dies in one of them, and in the other, she finds out her deadbeat boyfriend was cheating on her after years working two part-time jobs to support him. 
but that's not what's important. <laughs> what is important is how our decision making connects opportunity, consequence, and our future outcomes. What you do now matters not just for today, but for the thousands of tomorrows to come. As simplistic as that sounds, it's a hypothesis that made a lot of sense to me at the time and has profoundly impacted the way I view my connection to the world. I visualize the universe as a series of sliding glass doors that open and close all too quickly. And it's up to us to pick the right moments and the right doors to move through to the other side. Our lives are constantly challenged by decisions we make. And in the crossroads of opportunity are the defining moments that take us down new but uncertain or familiar but safe pathways. We together are experiencing what I, con uh, what I consider to be a defining moment today. Despite other commitments, personal doubts, financial and social barriers, we made a choice to be here. You, to pursue your higher education at Heritage, and me, to share the stories that I hope will reinforce your decision to be here and encourage you to make the most of your time on this campus and of your future. So with that as the backstory, I'm going to ask you to follow me through a sliding door of sorts as I share what I've learned on my own path to finding a fulfilling life. I want to tell you four stories of success, failure, disappointment, and redemption. No life story is complete without these elements, and certainly no decisions are exempt to these potential outcomes. Success. The great former Green, Green Bay Packers coach Vince Lombardi said, the difference between a successful person and others is not a lack of strength, not a lack of knowledge, but rather a lack in will, the will to succeed. The will to succeed looks frankly an awful lot like hard work to me. It looks like waiting on tables and taking odd jobs. It looks a lot like my mom selling fish at the back of our van to give us kids a chance for a better life and a chance to go to college. It's a former employee and friend of mine sitting somewhere in the audience today who had the courage and the will to pursue her dream of becoming a nurse despite the hurdles put in her way. She is a student, a single parent with two children. She holds several part-time jobs including delivering the paper route she has. And I can't begin to tell you how much I admire her for her tenacity and abundance of that will to succeed. Nothing truly worthwhile will ever come easy. Your success will be proportionate to the effort and energy you put into achieving your goals. The great thing about success is you often can see what it looks like through that glass door. But the only way to get the door to slide open and be able to walk through is by doing the hard work necessary to unlock the opportunities and choices that follow. Failure. Growing up in a predominantly Asian American family carries a strong stigma for the word failure. While the fear of failure can be an effective motivator for achievement, it also can stifle creativity and have the opposite unintended consequence of holding you back from reaching your potential. Wayne Gretzky, one of hockey's greatest players of all time, said it best. When asked by a reporter why he took so many shots, he bluntly replied, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. The perfect game, as is the perfect life, is a myth. The reality looks more like a scoreboard of wins and losses, where hopefully there are more successes than failures. While the goal is to succeed, failure is also important. In those losses, 
we build the critical personal resilience necessary to help overcome adversity and push you to continue to take risk and press forward. I have found myself to be at my most resilient when surrounded with smart, positive people, people who share my passion, understand, and support my goals. Look around you and choose wisely. Align yourself with those who will lift your spirits when you're down, people who are going to tell you the truth about yourself when others lack the courage and carry to give you the hard feedback that you need. People who are going to challenge you to do the right thing and encourage you to find constructive outcomes to your conflicts. I've been fortunate to meet mentors and friends like this throughout my career, and as a leader, I go out of my way to find these kinds of people for our organization. I guarantee you, with a strong support network to lean on, it will make your challenges less daunting and take the sting out of the inevitable failures, giving you the strength to try, 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 try again. On disappointment, from the minute you are born, everyone has an idea of what is expected of you. If my parents had their way, I would be a nurse like my mother. As wonderful a profession as nursing is, I know it wasn't right for me. There's a funny story I like to tell about my parents and my chosen profession. As I mentioned, I didn't exactly meet my parents' expectations of going into the medical field. In fact, it was quite shocking for them to hear that the best my four-year education got me was a job in the newspaper business. <laughs> a job which I learned later on to them meant I was delivering the newspaper. <laughs> what self-respecting Asian American would go into the newspaper business? Certainly none of their friends' sons and daughters was doing this. And at the very least, I could have at least gotten on television like that Connie Chung. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't until years later that my parents finally recognized that I didn't exactly deliver the papers. It had something to do with the internet and computers. And when I was made a director, for them it meant I must actually be good at whatever that was regardless if they understood it or not. I never set out to disappoint my parents, but nevertheless, that is what initially happened. In pursuing your dream, ultimately you are going to come up against obstacles and someone else's idea of whom and what you are supposed to be. For my parents, becoming a nurse and getting married represented stability and security paths they knew well and wanted for their children. They knew what fulfillment was for them and could not see any other path. In the big scheme of things, I can look back and say that we actually had the same goal. We just wanted to go about it in different ways. And I happened to choose the path of greatest resistance from their perspective. That might have been so, but the greater disappointment would have been to pursue someone else's dream. It rarely works out and often leads to something worse than disappointment, regret. So finally, we come to redemption. Everyone loves a good story of redemption. I certainly do. I think at some level, we all want to believe that every man and woman is inherently good and can be redeemed. Specifically, what that means to me is that regardless of what you've done in the past, chances you've blown, where you've come from, failure, disappointment, success, you always have an opportunity to change the outcome of your life, to take the negative and turn it into positive, should you choose to. I am infamous at the Herald for telling people who work for me, don't let the environment rule you, you rule the room. It's my way of saying that only you can control your own actions 
and that you have the power to make a situation better or worse. What you do matters. Each of you, whether you like it or not, influence the lives of others and make a difference in shaping your community. Let your achievements be the positive impact you make on others' lives. It may, in the end, lead to others' redemption, including your own. As for me, my redemption comes from what I think to be having what I think to be the greatest job in the world. As the publisher of the Yakima Herald Republic, I get to come to work every day and interact with smart people who care deeply about their community and share my same sense of mission and social obligation. How ironic and gratifying for a person who believed she had so few words to say to now be at the helm of an organization with the power to say many things to thousands of people every day. For the rest of your school term, as well as the rest of your life, you will be faced with many defining moments and sliding doors to move through. Expect to make some mistakes. Expect to experience doubt. Expect to cry over disappointment, but never expect to stop moving forward. You are in charge of your future. Find the will to make this a better world, not just for yourself, but for all those that you come in contact with. And in doing so, you will find your redemption. Thank you.